Well, hi. Um, my name is Brandon Mueller, and I'm here to tell you my adventures of setting up Jenkins um, from uh, kind of a newbie perspective. Um, so I uh, basically chained together some, some tools to get the job done and wanted to tell you about it. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a web developer. Um, I'm the lead engineer at, at K-12 Services. That's kind of a made-up title. The boss told me I could be the director of Kick-Ass if I wanted to. So, um, yeah, and like I said, total Jenkins newbie. Um, started, I've, I've played around with Jenkins for a long time, but as far as actually being serious about it, it's only since, been since about the beginning of this year. A um, little bit about my career past. Um, my first job in the web development field was at a company called the, Li uh, the Library Corporation. Um, they did automation software for uh, large and small public and school libraries. Um, I was part of a two-person team that developed and maintained a content management system for the libraries. Um, there really wasn't any form of uh, deployment or continuous integration. I mean, it was literally copying one folder from one Windows box to another, and now you're deployed. So um, that caused a lot of problems, but hey, you know, it, it got the job done. Um, I started working for K-12 uh, Food Service as a PHP developer. Um, talked them into using Git, so we started using Git. And um, we had dabbled with, with Jenkins for a little bit, but never really got it, got it off the ground. Um, one thing led to another, and I got bored of there and started working for Politico, which is a, uh, a news website about uh, politics. Um, they, when I got there, they had already had uh, Alassian Bamboo set up, and um, I really, really liked it. I really liked um, the fact that, you know, you just push out code, you get feedback right away whether or not everything's okay, et cetera. Um, and so I kind of made the decision right then and there that if I had anything to do with it, we would always, I would always use continuous integration in some form. Um, so one thing led to another, and, and my old boss talked me into coming back um, to uh, K-12 Food Service, so went back there, and one of my first uh, orders of business was setting up Jenkins uh, for the main project that we're working on. Um, so just a, a quick, you know, kind of marketing pitch of how to uh, sell Jenkins to your executives. Um, you know, I think... Uh, I think this is pretty standard. Uh, you know, we're humans. We all make mistakes. Uh, deploying updates manually takes time, and it's error prone. Um, tests and quality assurance is inconsistent without CI. Uh, you can automatically test and uh, uh, inspect before every update. Um, and you know, for for me anyway. The upfront cost was a little significant. It did take me a little while to get everything set up in the way that I wanted it to. But now that it's set up and it's running, um, it's, it's been very rock solid, and it's prevented a lot of uh, careless mistakes. Um, so why Jenkins? You know, we, we evaluated different solutions, but really when it came down to it, um, we're open source fanatics, if you will. So. Uh, that, that, that made it one of the clear reasons um, to go with Jenkins. Also, um, we're, we're a very small uh, team. We really don't have an ops guy. Uh, so for us, um, the fact that Jenkins was already in the Ubuntu repository made it super easy to, to install, and it's uh, never caused any problems as far as updates. Um, and, you know, I, I get the impression that a lot of the other CI server solutions, they're either closed source or they just seem too immature. Um, plus, this awesome community helps. Tons of plugins. Um, it's really done everything that, that we wanted it to do. Um, so, really, this talk is about kind of connecting these different tools together to get the job done. Um, we started using GitLab. Uh, here's some screenshots from their uh, README documentation. 
Um, it's pretty much just a uh, GitHub clone. Um, here's the, the marketing spiel from, from their README documentation um, about what GitLab is. Um, the main takeaway from, from this that I find really interesting is they claim to be the largest uh, and most popular solution for hosting Git repositories on premise. Um, but why, why I chose it, um, again, it's open source. Um, it runs just on the plain Linux, Nginx, MySQL, Ruby stack. Um, so if you've ever done any type of Rails deployment, it's actually really easy to, uh, to deploy GitLab and keep it up to date. Um, it's so easy, in fact, uh, DigitalOcean, who's a cloud hosting provider, they offer a one-click install. Um, that's really neat to, to get it up and going and just to play around with it and try it out. Um, but last I checked, uh, their one-click install for um, GitLab was using Ubuntu 13.10, um, which isn't the long-term support. So, And it's so it seriously only takes five minutes to deploy it, so you're better off just installing whatever flavor of Linux you want and, and, uh, and installing it yourself. Um, and it also has a predictable release schedule. It's like the 23rd of every month. They come out with a new release. Uh, and so you can just mark that on your calendar and go in there and update it. Um, and also, you know, it has awesome access controls. Um, so the question becomes, well, why use GitLab? Why not use Bitbucket or GitHub or something else? Um, you know, for, for, for me, uh, the biggest reason why is I want to have control over as much as I can. And so to have something on premise or, or on your own cloud hosting provider, uh, it just makes sense. Um, plus, for smaller teams, in my opinion, GitHub can get unnecessarily pricey. Uh, they charge by, by the repository. So you could easily find yourself with a $150 a month bill just to have some Git repositories. Um, of course, with Bitbucket, they have a different monetization model. Um, they charge by developer. So um, we've taken advantage of that, and we will back up stuff to, to Bitbucket occasionally. Um, so how does Jenkins interact with GitLab? Um, there's a couple of plugins uh, that, that, that we use. The first one I'm going to talk about is the merge request plugin. Um, GitLab uh, has something that they call a merge request, which is a direct analog to uh, um, GitHub's merge, or pardon me, pull request. And so what the, um, what the merge request plugin does for you is it will uh, basically, anytime you, you create a merge request inside of GitLab, it will automatically see that merge request, pick it up and build it, and then it actually uh, reports back to GitLab as far as whether or not the build passed. Um, and so there's an a example of how you would actually set it up. Uh, you can customize your, your uh, messages for that feedback as far as whether or not a build passes or fails. Um, and then we also use uh, the GitLab Build Now plugin. Um, what the Build Now plugin does for you is instead of doing uh, polling on the repository, um, you just set up a service hook that, that'll just hit the uh, REST endpoint inside of Jenkins so that your project will immediately be picked up and get built. Um, so we kind of devised a little workflow uh, around uh, GitLab. Um, so basically, if, if, you're, if you have a, an issue as a developer uh, or user story, um, you'll create a, a feature branch. Um, so like feature, issue number, short description. Uh, so you write your code, you push it up, you open up a merge request when you're ready. And uh, so when the merge request is open, uh, Jenkins picks it up, builds it. And then when the merge request is accepted, um, Jenkins picks that, up, picks that up and builds it as well. So 
exact same thing, only uh, a very poor attempt to uh, illustrate it in a flowchart. Um, so basically, there's two different projects inside of uh, Jenkins. And again, this probably isn't the best way to do it, but it's the way that I was able to figure out how to make it work. Um, so we have an app test project. Um, so that listens for the merge requests. And then we have a app dev project that, uh, that basically that's the build now plugin part. So anything that gets pushed to developer master branch um, will be picked up and get built. Um, so that's the, the interaction between GitLab and, and, uh, and Jenkins. Now for the actual build itself, um, we use Fing. And this is uh, something probably specific to a PHP project. Um, Fing pretty much is a, uh, is a uh, clone of Ant, uh, only written in PHP. Um, so it uses a build XML file. Uh, there's a lot of pre-made uh, Fing targets, they're called. Um, and so you can tie those together to do more complicated things. You can uh, easily execute arbitrary shell commands. Um, and so, you know, if, 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 if you're using any type of continuous integration with a PHP project, you should really be using Fing. I can't really understand why you wouldn't. Um, so I'm very opinionated about that. Um, so because basically all the build steps that, that Jenkins does just kind of hits a thing target, um, there's really no excuse for you pushing something up and then discovering that your build failed. Um, so that kind of prevents some issues. So for our project in particular, I just took a screen grab of all the different thing targets that, that, that I have set up. Um, and so you, know, you can do things like uh, hit the uh, check yourself uh, target, which basically runs all the analytics and, and unit tests. And, uh, and then you can deploy and install dependencies. Uh, so here's an example of the deploy target. Um, basically, this creates some uh, environment-specific config files and, um, and then creates a vhost file, starts Apache for you, enables the site. Um, so this, this, this part is very obvious. So how does uh, Jenkins interact with Fing? Um, there's a Fing plugin, and it just works. Uh, no fuss, no muss. Uh, you just uh, um, tell Jenkins as part of the build steps which thing targets you want to you want to hit, and you pass in whatever environmental variables you you need. Um, so here's here's a screenshot of the console output from Jenkins. Um, very straightforward. Just just hits those uh, thing targets that that I told it to hit, and passes in whatever environmental variables. Um, so going along the, the same lines of, uh, of Fing and, and, and Jenkins and how, you know, it helps us make better code, um, there's a PHP code sniffer. Um, what this is, this, uh, this reports in a base, in the standard check style XML format, any, uh, code violations. Um, we use the PSR2 standard, which is, uh, something that, that uh, the framework intercooperation inter group um, from PHP came out with that basically just helps you standardize all your different tabs and spaces and where new lines go, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also use CSS Lint and JS Hint. Um, same thing only for CSS and JS. So as a summary of what, what all the different build steps are. Um, so we use Fing to uh, make environmental um, build specific config files, uh, run Composer. Composer is a um, package manager for PHP. Uh, we run Bower. Bower is a um, package manager for handling front end assets. Aesthetic. Aesthetic is a, um, is a tool that 
helps you basically minify JavaScript files, uh, run, run different front-end assets through filters to basically uh, get them to the state that they need to be in order to uh, ship them in production. Run analytics, analytics and, and tests, and clear Symfony cache. Um, so here's a screenshot of the install thing target. I'm just running through each one of those steps. So what about deployment? Um, so, you know, as a Jenkins newbie, I could be completely talking out of my butt at this point. But I get the impression, you know, Jenkins was never intended to be a deployment tool. It's really a inspection tool. Um, so it kind of just leaves that up to you uh, as far as how you're actually going to deploy. Um, there's a couple of options. There's the publish over SSH plugin. Again, that just kind of gets the files where they need to go. Uh, there's the deploy plugin. My impression of that was that's really a Java specific thing. And then there's, you know, you can just do a bash script, but what does that even mean? So, <laughs> I mean, I know what it means, but, but it, that, that would just be a black box that Jenkins would run and who knows what, what it actually does. Um, so we actually throw in RabbitMQ into the mix here. Um, we use RabbitMQ for a lot of our process flow, um, so it was an easy choice for me to make just to pick up RabbitMQ. I already knew how it worked. Um, I already know how to do consumers and producers and all that kind of stuff, so it just fit. Um, so basically what happens is there's a, uh, a post-build task that triggers a bash script that just sends off a RabbitMQ message. Um, this is kind of interesting to me because Jenkins no longer cares where the app is being deployed. It's more of a, you could almost call it a domain event, right? Because all that Jenkins says is, hey, I built the app. It, it passed, it failed. Here's all the parameters. I'm done. Do whatever you need to do. Um, so many consumers can receive the message um, and deploy the app to as many services, servers as needed. Um, at this point, this is more of a theory than anything else because I haven't actually done that yet, but it should be very trivial to do. Um, I actually had some conversations in the hallway about different ways of deploying to multiple servers, so I don't know if that's the best way or not. Um, so taking a step back, um, a really brief explanation of how RabbitMQ works. Um, basically, you, there's, there's a producer, that's what actually produces the, the, the message, um, and they publish those messages to an exchange, okay? So the exchange then decides where that message actually needs to go. Um, so that could be to another queue, that could be to, an, to another exchange. Um, but then the consumer, the consumer is what actually picks up the message and does something with it. Um, that uh, that actually connects to to the queue. So, so what produces the message goes to an exchange. What picks up the message goes to the actual queue. Um, so there are a couple of different types of exchanges. There's a direct exchange. So the idea is I'm publishing to an exchange. That exchange is then just going to immediately drop that message into a single queue. There's a fan out exchange. That's where the the exchange will actually publish the message to however many queues are, are set up to receive it. And then there's a topic um, exchange, and that's the main one that, that, that we're currently using. What that does is you, there's a routing key, which is just a field in the header of the message. Um, and so you can have wildcard routes. So basically you could say, like, anything that, that's a wildcard, or, or dot .orange wildcard, that goes to this one queue. Anything that... Uh, that's lazy, whatever, goes to this other queue. So this, that, that can get really um, complex, and there's really a lot of different ways that you can kind of chain these types of, of exchanges together. Um, so here's an example message of what, what RabbitMQ is actually sending. So uh, in this example, it's posting to a CI exchange. Um, it passes in the routing key, which is basically just CI project name, uh, branch name. 
and then whatever uh, uh, environmental variables are available to um, to the bash script, it just it just passes them right on through. So this is what this is uh, how how you could potentially do this. Um, Jenkins fires off a, a message to the topic exchange. The topic exchange then would would know where, based upon the routing key, that message needs to go. Um, so, for example, if it's um, project, if it's uh, uh, coming from the branch origin develop, it would then send it off to a develop branch queue, which would then go to the dev server. Um, if it's going to origin master, it would then go to a fan out exchange, so that all the application servers could pick it up and deploy the app. Um, or for specific Integration branches or feature branches, you could set up uh, to to deploy to a um, staging or QA server. Right now, the only part of this that that we have implemented is that top one. Um, basically, if, if if that routing key doesn't match, it's just it's just a dead letter. Uh, RabbitMQ just drops it. Um, but it it would be very trivial just to go ahead and set set it up to do it just like this. So um, our app is a uh, Symphony 2 application. Um, Symphony is a uh, MVC framework for, um, for PHP. Um, it's, it's a very big framework in the sense that there's a lot of people that develop with it. And so uh, there's a lot of third party bundles. Um, there's a bundle. Um, Called Old Sound RabbitMQ Bundle. Um, the Old Sound is uh, it's uh, Old underscore Sound on Twitter. He's one of the uh, main contributors to the RabbitMQ project. Um, so uh, basically, we just drop this bundle into our app, and then we can start using it. Um, so the consumer code actually lives inside the application itself, and the consumer code really all that it does is drop down the, to the command line and uh, execute thing targets. Um, so here's an example of the, the way that, that the, you would uh, configure it. So basically, you just tell, uh, tell the, the bundle, hey, I'm listening to this particular queue. Um, and uh, you do have to configure the queue, and that, that configuration actually needs to match what, what, what Ravenum queue has set up. Um, but it's, uh, it's fairly straightforward. So what then that allows us to do then is inside the app itself, we have the, the consumer code, which really all that it does is it, um, it tries to check out the git commit that built. Um, and if that fails, it just rejects the message, um, logging the results. So if, if, if the app isn't updating, um, we can go look at the logs and figure out why. Um, if it checks out successfully, then it actually needs to re re uh, redo the thing install step. Um, and that's because of some goofy things with PHP I'm not going to get into right now. Um, but basically, if that fails, then um, it tries to roll back. Um, I see some potential issues with this, uh, especially you might encounter some like race conditions or, or um, I should probably step through the install processes one by one um, so that I can figure out exactly where it fails. Um, but it, to be honest, it hasn't failed yet, and um, we're only doing this in development. So it hasn't been a problem yet. So hopefully, it'll continue to not be a problem. So um, bringing it all together. so. Uh, basically, as, as a developer, I have my local Vagrant box that I develop in. It uses Fing to run analytics and, 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 and the unit tests, et cetera. Um, when, when my feature is done, I push that code up to GitLab. Jenkins picks it up, uh, uses Fing internally to, um, to rebuild the app. Jenkins sends off a message. The application servers then pick them up pick up that message and, uh, and deploy the app locally. So, um, 
So here's the, some of the uh, Jenkins plugins that, that we uh, use to get this done. Um, so there's like the check style plugin, the, the two different GitLab plugins, and um, then the Hudson post task plugin is what we're using to fire off that, um, that bash script to send the message. So things I feel are missing or things that I'm just too incompetent to develop myself or they exist and I just don't know about it. So um, I think that there really should be a RabbitMQ post build producer plugin. Um, there's a RabbitMQ um, consumer plugin that will actually trigger the build. Um, so that's interesting, but I'm really looking for the other end of that. Um, better notifications from Jenkins to GitLab. So that, that merge request build, builder plugin is really cool in the sense that it adds notifications to the, um, to the uh, discussion tab of the merge request. Um, but it would be really neat just to have like a build status on any particular branch. Um, the enterprise edition of GitLab actually has this. Um, so hopefully they'll add that to the community edition as well. Um, Artifact publishing inside of Jenkins. What I mean by that is I would like to be able to publish uh, arbitrary HTML files as artifacts inside of Jenkins and have the like links on the left-hand side. I'm sure it's possible, but I just, if anybody knows, please come get me and I'll have a... HTML publisher. Okay. Well, there, there you go. Yeah, very... See, that's what it was. It was too obvious of a name. <laughs> Couldn't find it. Um... Dynamic build plan for feature branches. Um, I actually, I had a conversation with somebody in the hallway that apparently that's possible in Jenkins. Um, but what I'm talking about there is like, okay, so I, I, I have these two different projects to listen to the different branches. And really, I would like for there to just be one, one project when, the, when a merge request is sent I'd like for like a, a copy of that project to be made, or I don't know the logistics of how it would happen. But the idea is that each each feature branch, I would like for there to be a like forever lasting build plan for that one feature branch until you delete it. Because now the the problem that I run into now is when I first set this up, I I had configured uh, Jenkins to only save like the last five builds, and suddenly thirty merge requests came in. And um, so I only have the last five builds, so I can't go, go back and actually look. So I have to configure it to remember the builds forever, which is just silly. So um, I'm interested in figuring out how to do that if anybody would be willing to help me. Um, here's a summary, some helpful links of, uh, of all the different things that, that, that I'm using to build this uh, PHP project. And um, that's all that I have as far as content. So if there's any questions, I would love to hear them.